Before I get into this video, has anyone got a solution for draft seal storage? Um, I quite often take a reel or, or take it down and take it to site to use a little bit off the reel because you don't know how much you're going to want. You don't want to waste it by cutting a short amount off. So when you do that, they tend to get lobbed in the van and damaged. Um, and then difficult to put back in a storage location. So what, what's, what do other people use and what works for you? This is just killing my OCD. It's got to be tidied up a little bit. As has the end of the storeroom. Those windows there, long time viewers of the channel will know that I started a restoration series on the sash windows on the farmhouse at the farm. They're the windows for that. I did finally glaze them a couple of months ago. I think I did a video on it, but uh, yeah, they've been sat there probably three or four years now waiting to be fitted. So. Wouldn't they get around to it? But uh, yeah, now I've got a bit more space. I've cleaned out this end of the container a little bit. I want to continue this shelving around and then get all this stuff that's piled on the floor and probably bring the shelving back to somewhere here. It's all all stuff that you buy in bulk um, to make it cheaper or worthwhile buying it, but then you have to store it. So I want to get all that on some racking in this unit here, which would be good. Right, Monday morning, we're on site. I'm going to get this done today. I'm going to take these sheets off of the beams and then just do some kerf cutting on all these joints, get that beam so it sits absolutely beautifully on all the posts and the braces and drive all the pegs in to secure that in place. I've also put in the back of the van this morning, got this, the, that's the underside to the front door canopy, so it's a, a huge long length of tricoya that I've joined in the middle with another sort of sheet of tricoya. And um, once it's in place, I'll sand and fill and paint it again. So it should just look nice and seamless throughout the whole length of the piece and, and not have any movement. So it'll look really good outside. And there's some counter battens, but I'll get into all that stuff when we do that work. I've just brought them over with me this morning. These joints are all looking pretty decent. Like I'm pretty sure they weren't that good when we left them the other night. So I reckon they've settled in quite nicely. I've just had a bit of a play fet in this one down. I'm gonna be working on this one next. I'll film that one. So the idea is to just go around and kerf the shoulders to bring them back in line. So like this brace here is touching at this point, but there's gaps everywhere else. So we've got to clean a bit off that joint at the places it's touching to bring it down so that beam sits nicely on top of everything. There we go, after a little bit of work, it's looking pretty decent around these joints. Good enough for oak framing anyway, because they're gonna move a little bit in time as it settles down. But with a little bit of pressure from them draw boards as well, as it all settles, it will hopefully pull them joints together nice, but that's certainly good enough for what I'm looking for. The reason I left these pegs in not particularly tight, I just pushed them in is I can pull them back out and like a gap like that one where the brace is lower than the post, these are cut to the right length. So that brace has got to go up. So I can just loosen them pegs, put them ones in first, and then that will bring all that brace through nice and tight, hopefully. Theory anyway.
Laura. Perfect. Not put all the pegs in this one, but as a joiner who makes kitchens windows to high tolerances, I didn't really expect any more than that from oak framing. I'm really happy. Just making sure that the, the pegs these sides don't come through so that I've got enough room to tap one of them this way to make it nice and tight. Superb. I'll spend all lunch time just looking at that. Uh, another little Bradshaw signature. Right there. Right, pegs on the back of here, I'm just drilling them in the centre so it guides the org a bit. I've got a slightly smaller auger bit that's tight on the uh, pegs. It's going to take that back. I'm going about an inch away from the other side of the joint, so the, the peg from the other side of that timber is an inch through the tenon and will hold the strength. And on this side, just cut the pegs off. And take the bit that we've just cut off and it should wedge in tight here with that slightly smaller drill bit. and then cut them off the same. We should end up with beautiful tight fitting pegs in a, in a month or two when everything's shrunk and expanded. These are kiln dried, these are green oak, so technically the green should reduce in size and these with the outside ambient moisture should expand and uh, fit really nicely. what 
think it's time for a couple of minutes of cinematic joint appreciation. You enjoyed that, didn't you? Right, I'll get this one covered up and get the other one unsheathed and do exactly the same to that. A little video of the other frame before we start fettling it. A few gaps here and there. after most of them have pulled up pretty nice that's probably the worst one a bit of a battle with that one really smart I'm gonna get that sheeted up now um, I'm not seeing this footage but I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a pretty good video so if you made it this far and enjoyed it hit the like button and leave me a comment as well. I read every single comment. I don't reply to them all, just don't have time anymore. But uh, I, do, I have read every single comment um, that has been posted on my YouTube, so don't think uh, they go in unnoticed. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.